Welcome to Scully Goes Wide. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson. And I'd like to review to all of you some of the worst fucking excuses of pro wrestling that has ever disgraced the sport. Namely, anything that has something that follows with the words of wrestling in its title. Let's get started, shall we? Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, we're gonna start off with the obvious. Grandmasters of Wrestling, 1993. What an epic disaster this was. You had the whole talent roster of legends at your disposal. Iron Right Shark, Ken Patera, Devin Storm, Blassie, Freddie Blassie, Baron Von Rask, the Iron Sheep, and a guy who we had never heard of before prior, mind you. Two grandmasters of wrestling shows, a two of the ring name The Mighty Maccabee, who also has a Facebook page. And the reason why I say this is because these grandmasters of wrestling shows were taped 25 years ago. 25 years. Guess who was the announcer? You'll never guess. You'll never guess. And, and Actually, don't guess because you're looking at it in the freaking screen right now. This guy's name is Mike Amundsen. And you know, when a guy has old man in his last name, you know he's a pretty bad announcer. But that's not the case with all announcers with the last names that start with old man. Oh, uh, God, what the fuck is this? You have so many fans in the crowd that are so disinterested in this fucking show. By the way, by the way, this is not to count the fact that Glassy Freddy Blassie, which by the way stole the show in a nutshell, simply by singing a song called Pencil Neck Geek. Which, if I'm not mistaken, was written by some guy back in the 60s and the 50s. And this guy, you know, Classy Freddy Blassie, being this classic guy that he was, he sang Pencil Neck Geek, and, and then this guy, this guy ruins the whole damn segment. Every time there's a chorus, he just fucking raises a piece of paper up. That reads chorus on it. And that's how the whole segment went to shoot. Luckily, Blassie Freddy Blassie, being the class act that he is, saved face and saved his segment from being the most god awful thing known to man by swinging his guitar, the guy with the chorus piece of paper. And basically pulled the Jeff Jarrett before Jeff Jarrett started pulling Jeff Jarrett's. Needless to say, this was the only saving grace of the show aside from the Mighty Maccabees two matches against the Iron Sheik and Iron Mike Shot. By the way, the latter two of which were aligned with one another. So let's keep that in mind. For the 
Maccabea Heavyweight Championship. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's continue. Number two, right? The Olympian. He was Kurt Angle before Kurt Angle was Kurt Angle. Ken Patera, he is obviously really in the fight. But what the hell would I know? I don't know shit. But this guy, he cuts a promo, if I recall. Wasn't the best promo, wasn't the worst. You talk about the worst, look at anything Rowan Reigns has come up with over the last four years. Look at Lex Luger's 2000 promo. Most cringe promo you'll ever see. Wrestling of Regret talked about that particular promo. Boy, did he deliver. I'm a big fan of Brian Zane, big fan of Jim Cornette, big fan of anyone who understands wrestling. But that's beside the point, is it? By the way, Baron Von Rask, I believe he had a match. It wasn't so good. And just based on these big pictures that you see right here, right above the logo, oh my freaking Lord, were these people disinterested or what? And what about Michael Manson, the guy who announced the main event? Actually, it's a double main event because the first one ended in a DQ and then the Mighty Maccabee wanted a rematch because even though he won via DQ, he was not awarded the belt because belts are not supposed to change hands as a result of a DQ. So, he gets his rematch. He defeats the Iron Sheik despite being the most overly generic jobber in wrestling history and every ninth grade math teacher's fantasies finally came through that night in a form of that man would you see on the final left hand corner of your screen the mighty Maccabee not that it means anything but the hell is right alright let's consider the facts Mighty McAbee and Classy Freddy Blast. Didn't think those two would work, right? These two were the only saving graces of this show. Everyone else just brought the damn thing down. By the way, by the way, the Mighty McAbee won both of his matches. Both of them. It's 2 and 0 as of that particular tape. Now, he did wrestle another match on another man, on another Grandmasters of Wrestling DVD. But he won that one too. So, his short lived career as a sports entertainer, not a wrestler, he's a sports entertainer. Well, at least he would be in TNA or Ring of Honor or WWE, anywhere else, but not here. No, Grandmasters is wrestling. No, this guy. This guy ain't no enhancement town, though. He won't be anywhere else. This guy is main event material. The whole damn thing revolved around him. And surprisingly, he managed to raise a good deal of money to produce these shows. By the way, he was a main book. He's a fan of all these wrestlers from the past, so he wanted to make them go alive and go together. That's it, right? Yeah. But anyway, this guy, the Monty McAbee, organized these shows and made a hell of a lot of money in doing so. And I tip my hat to you, sir. You have my respect. And not only that, but you have many people's respects, too. And I'm going to tell you now, brother. I had no idea how much of an epic win you ended up becoming. Because 25 years later, we done saw your Facebook. Yeah, that's right, man. We done saw your Facebook. You an internet sensation now. You world famous, man. I'm world famous, bitch. 
Yeah, you tell them I am not to be. Anyway, into the next show. This one, which occurred six years following the tapings of Grandmaster Wrestling. Of course, I'm talking about the other terrible paper game with a word being followed by the phrase of wrestling title. Uh, by the way, you probably already know this. You know how many people sat on this paper? And I'm not talking about the one in '93. I'm talking about the one in '99. You know how many? You know how many people shat all over Heroes of Wrestling? I mean, good lord in heaven. What the fuck is that? What is that? Personally, I wouldn't have even considered booking that pay-per-view as a whole, just like the one that you're seeing about right now. You know this one, this one right? Yeah. So here's a rest. The worst fucking show of the 20th century. And what a way to close out the 20th century. What a way to close out the second millennium, right? to come up with a show that would scar children for the rest of their goddamn lives. What about this show, huh? We got the debut of a man called Tim Cole Scorpio. Tim Cole Scorpio. Well, of course, he was known as Julio Fantastico. I recall. Not that I don't recall anything, it's just that I choose not to know most of these. It's not that I don't know Heroes of this was not intended to be one of the people to you. Because the guy behind it, a man named Bill Stone, initially intended that should this pay per view succeed with at least a point zero one buy rate, which ironically was his goal, that he would make a sequel to the show in the spring of 2000, which would never happen. Because this show sucked! It absolutely sucked. And I'll tell you why. First of all, they had this guy pictured near the center announcer that show. He delivered probably the most infamous line of any announcer gig ever. Somebody's gonna get their ass whipped tonight in here! That's right. There's nobody acting to such a degree saying somebody's going to get their ass whipped tonight. And by somebody, I mean nobody. Because many of the talents booked for this pay-per-view were clearly over the hill. Their glory days were long behind them for a generation by this point, in some cases. And we had a 770 pound Yoko Suda main eventing this pay per view. What the fuck? <laughs> How do you. Why the hell would Bill Small come up with this? He's stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid. There's, there's no way to say it. And then, this, and then he hires this. this Baseball sportscaster 
to be the lead color commentator for the show and announce mid-show that Captain Lou, Captain Lou, Captain Lou, Wow Man, oh, would be the commissioner of Heroes of Wrestling. I don't know how to respond to that, but I will say this was an absolute abortion from second one. Absolute abortion. They had George the Animal Steel in a match. They had Cowboy Bob Orton and a soon to be dementia sufferer in Jimmy Snuka. God rest his soul. And that would be a very cringe match. Of course, I mentioned earlier the debut of Scorpio, also known as Julio Fantastico. And I also need to mention now King Kong Bundy, Jim Neidhart, Nikolai Volkov, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and a miniature King Kong Bundy look like. We'll just call him King Kong Bundy Jr. at this point. Because that's what he looks like. He was actually one of the bookers for you. He was actually on staff. On ring staff. You know, he was primarily the guy in charge of the security team over there, if I recall. And then, and then of course, the infamous match between the Battle of the Super Heavyweights. The former Yokozuna taking on King Kong Bundy. That was actually supposed to go on last control. Drunken antics of a clearly inebriated Jake Roberts, who just several years prior had been released for the second time by WWE and WWF because of promos like, you want to play 21? I got 22. You want to play blackjack? I got too many of those too. You want to play footsie? I got too many of those too. Then, of course, they had Abdullah the Butcher take on One Man Gang in another battle of the Super Heavyweights, except, OH MY GOD, THE BLOOD! Abdullah the Butcher, who was known for using a fork in his matches to carve the skin of his opponents, he decided to do that again with Man Gang in this particular taping. I believe it's October 1999, around Halloween time, so it makes perfect sense that they come up with a pay per view of this cringe level. As I like to call it, the worst in the world! But anyway, another notable segment was the Clyde Bolkar. Demonstration, and yet he sang out in song, singing Ava Nagliva. But that was not supposed to be the demonstration. What was supposed to be the demonstration was in fact much different. But Jake Roberts, of course, being the man that he was, the drunken inebriated. Intoxicated as balls, man, that he was. Staggered for pretty much the entire night in the main event, which was basically two events rolled into one. And he basically just 
he didn't know where the hell he was. I mean, he was just fucking lost. Lost as a bird in high weeds. And then he lays his pet snake on this, this guy. And that was the cherry on top of the worst pay-per-view in the history of wrestling up until December to December, which was WWE's failed ECW relaunch summed up in about two and a half hours. God was this fucking terrible. And I didn't even know this was around at the time until I saw the commercial. I was like, oh my god, I gotta see this. And I saw this. Oh no, why did I fucking waste my time? Ah! But the rest of the state today is history which we pray to God will never repeat. Oh, wait. TNA. So history repeats itself. Yeah. And you thought WCW, and this of course was bad, you thought TNA during. Vince Russo eras were bad. This one, this one was far worse. So much worse. You can't even in hell script this. And, and, and by the way, Grandmasters of Wrestling is a team in comparison to this one. So let's keep that in mind. And that was Scorgo's one.